I saw I saw Gary Moore when I was 17. You must have been young, yeah. I was 17, and, and he'd do all of that stuff. And the thing, and I was so like into, you know, when I was 17, I was so into blues, and I was so into blues guitar solos and everything. But the thing that we almost did, and it's so easy to get into the trap of every time, is you go, and you go, dun, 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 dun. and here comes the end. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And you let that chord ring go. It's like, hang on, I thought this was the end. Forever. Like someone just keeps playing over that final chord. And you're like, oh, leave it, leave it, lads. Less is more. <laughs> always. The less is always, more. Always. And except in this environment. When like, there's no one watching. Like you're saying, when there's only a couple of cameras watching and you're thinking, get all the good licks in. You know. Well, look, this, this is as good a place to start as any, I think, isn't it? It's, um, I think so. Uh, are we filming and just doing stuff? Well, look, hello. Thanks for watching Anderton's TV. Don't really need to introduce the chap sitting next to me who has graciously invited us all up to um, the set of your mega sold out Universal tour at the Hammersmith Apollo. It's fun. Thanks, man. Hey, thanks for having me. This is, yeah, this is our mini run at, yeah. at, 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 at all in one venue for, for four nights. <sighs> Very cool. It's going to be stellar. It's, it's a and, lot of fun. And, uh, I got to know James a teeny weeny bit through a mutual friend of ours um, who plays keyboards in. Yes, he does. And some guitar. And, and a bit of guitar. guitar. And fine and guitar beautiful as backing well. singer. Yes, indeed. Um, Multi talented. And uh, your kind of career, I, or not even the career, but what's fascinated me and the reason I wanted to do this interview for so long and just chill is because underneath the sort of this, not pop star exterior, but this, you know, successful you know, big, you know, millions and billions of selling albums is basically just a dude that learned to play guitar. Totally. To a really good standard. Thanks. I don't know. Yeah, I, you know, I do. I still love it. It's still a huge part. If my music is pop and I'm, I'm entirely open to that and I'm, I hope people do see it as that as much as they, they might see it as other things, um, it's guitar based or guitar driven, you know, to, to the extent that, you know, I, I've, I've yet to and I don't think I'll ever really do much, if anything, performance-wise, without a guitar in my hands. Yeah. I've written a couple of tunes on the piano, but I'm not, I'm not one to sort of stand up there without it and, and have some fancy moves. <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a, I mean, I might, there might be some, you know, on a, a nice, nice sort of plush stage like this, there might be some fancy footwork, but the guitar will be in my hands still. And um, because, yeah, it's where I started. Uh, just learning to play the guitar, wanting to be a guitar player, not even considering singing. My brother was the lead singer oh, in the wow. bands that we that we we were in as, as teenagers, and I was always doing backing vocals. I guess maybe I had the confidence to do it because he could do it. And he's um, older brother. And... Older brother, yeah, yeah, only slightly. Um, and so I was never against it. I was just always uh, m my greatest love has always been for for guitar and guitar playing and great sound. So, so who kindled? That's what I want to get back to. Right. What, what sort of kindled that kind of love affair with the guitar? There's, uh, I'm sure there's the same for yourself. There's a lot of different ways to talk about that because there's a lot of big moments you know the, the the biggest probably most important one was when I was 11 years old um, my dad was playing some music downstairs in the living room I was up the stairs in my room it was quite sort of open I had my door open it was like a Saturday afternoon and he was putting he was playing music and, and he put on Layla by Derek and the Dominoes right I heard that guitar riff and it really clicked it sort of came it came in and to my ears and to my head and, and I went I ran downstairs and just said, what is that? You yeah. know, and he's not, my dad doesn't play the guitar. He just okay. loves that kind of music. That's yeah. his world and his era. And um, it, it blew my mind. Um, and from, from that moment, I was like, okay, I said, I think I, you know, I, football was all well and good, but I was like, you know, I want to learn to, I want to learn to do that. What was, so. Play the guitar. Uh, you're talking about first hearing Layla, what in the. It was 2000 and, was 2000? About 2000. 2001 maybe. So, because I, I remember my uh, first Eric Clapton experience was uh, in the 80s, so in my teens, in yeah. the 80s, yeah. and, and he had that massive album with Bad Love on it. And, totally. and, and quite a different Journey guitar Man. sound, Journey yeah. Man. And that was, so right. I've always harked back right. to, that's my kind of Yeah, Eric it's interesting, Clapton. and I love that stuff. You know, mm. I, I got introduced to the slightly more 80s, 90s Clapton through the 24 Nights live album. Right. Um, and actually, a different side to his music, but the Unplugged album. Yeah. Um, the 24 Nights album was one that I absolutely fell in love with. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, it was 1970 Layla Eric Clapton mixed with a bit yeah. of Derek, uh, Dwayne Allman. 
yeah. um, that that first sort of did it for me. I think I went from there to Cream. Yeah. My dad said, oh, you like Clapton, check out Cream. Yeah. You know, and I went, and Sunshine of Love is one of the first riffs I learned. I actually, I didn't attempt Layla first. I thought if I did, then I kind of went, you know what, too deep. I need to start a little shallower yeah. and work my way to it. Um, but I quickly, the reason why there's also different answers for sort of what got me into playing the guitar is I quickly went and discovered you know, the sort of lineage of guitar players from the sort of early 60s back and forward up until now. Right. Going back through the blues guys, Robert Johnson and the like, um, or John Lee Hooker or Hubert Sumlin or someone like that, you know, playing with Howlin' Wolf and all of that, uh, Muddy Waters and that, forward to kind of, uh, I went from sort of Clapton. I was, the Stones was always apparent, and that's where yeah. the songwriting comes from yeah. too, because although those guys are, you know, Keith and Ronnie and Mick, Mick uh, Taylor was a great um, player as well, uh, he's a great player. Although they're great players, the, the songs thing was coming into yeah. my mind there as well and, and coming into sort of the musical part of me. Um, did it ever go a little did it ever go a little heavier? You know, were you like a Zeppelin Hendrix yeah, kind yeah, of? Yeah, Zeppelin was a big thing. Yeah. Zeppelin was a big thing for me. I really fell in love with that. Um, I mean, you know, when I was 13, I, I, I was printing off Metallica tabs for, right. for, for six months. You know, I, I, was, I, I gave that some attention too. Aerosmith, you know, all that stuff, all yeah. that era. Um, and yeah, and everything around it. I remember things like I used to like. I still love like the Woodstock movie. Yeah. And my dad had a four-disc Woodstock right. vinyl from right. back in the day. He didn't go or anything, but he had it from when it came out after the festival happened. And it introduced me to Alvin Lee, introduced me to Canned Heat, and it even went as far as um, Sign the Family Stone. So okay. all of that, all of that, music with soul, not just yeah. soul music, but music with soul and, and, and passion and feeling. So much feeling. I loved all of that, and it took me down to sort of Steve Ray Vaughan and Robert Cray in the 80s, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and on from then, even Guns N' Roses, you know. I, I, I know I've kind of given you the broad no, spectrum of guitar music but I think those that's years, good. but and I went through all of it. Yeah, I, and I don't think that's that uncommon. I think, you know, there's a, mm. most guitar players, um, well, my wife always says that I'm terribly sort of introverted when I come to music because I only like music with guitars in it. Right. And, I, and I'm kind of like, yeah, but... But that, that's like a zillion different it's <laughs> genres true, it's of true, music. It's true, and I, and I, I think I was similar, but the, 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 at the same time, the, there's, a, there's a whole side of music that made me, that helped with the guitar stuff, alongside it helped me become the me that I am now um, as an artist, and that's all sort of soul stuff and Ray Charles and Aretha Franklin and all that stuff. But, you know, initially... I'm, from Clapton to Stevie Ray Vaughan, with Jimi Hendrix in between, I kind of was saying to my parents, I just want to play 12 bars and... Yeah, and, um, and 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 the blues and all of that stuff and, and do all that because it's just incredible. So, what do you stuff. remember? What was what was the first guitar that uh, your mum and dad bought you? Um, it was a Yamaha Pacifica. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. And they've just re Nothing I think they've recently that. reissued. There's a new look. There's like a new look one. I think I saw recently. There's some crazy stuff going on. But it was, you know, it looked a bit like a Strat. The Strat was my big goal. And yeah. it's funny, I say that now, I haven't played a Strat for a while. Just, I've never seen you with a Strat. No, yeah, it's, it's kind of mad. Um, you know, because from Clapton to Stevie Ray Vaughan to even John Mayer, those yeah. are three big, you know, um, influences of mine who are all world famous for their Strats. Mm. Um, I don't know, you know, I got the Pacific... <coughs> sorry. I got the Yamaha Pacifica because it looked like a Strat. Yeah. <coughs> and... Um, and, uh, you know, I, I obviously, you know, my parents just weren't just going to walk out and buy me a fancy Strat. They were yeah. like, well, you know, if you want the Strat, you've got to get a job and you're going to yeah. work your way towards it, yeah. which is reasonable enough. Um, so, but it was Layla, you know, it was all of that stuff that made me want, and Clapton made me want the Strat. And I got it, and I, and I, and I sort of rocked it for a while, and I, and I was playing it, and I was playing slinkier stuff, you yeah. know, uh, softer. Yeah. And then I sort of stepped away, skipping ahead quite a bit now. It was then after that I stepped away from electric guitar to work on songwriting and it just took me to acoustic guitars and it was this Epiphone J200 yeah. and I started to think more about Gibsons I, I, I sort of dreamed about getting a Gibson J200 one day and, and then I started to completely sort of reconsider Gibson guitars that I'd never been as into yeah. and you're going to hate me but it was the Les Paul that I was just like it's too much I can't handle it yeah. I'm sorry you look well, fantastic this is my this is you know I've been playing guitar for 25 something years 
This is my first Les Paul that I bought in 2014. Right. For not dissimilar reason to you, right. I vaguely remember I had one or I borrowed one uh, oh, yeah. like when it was in my early 20s. Yeah. And I don't know, I couldn't get the G strings to stay in tune and it was really no. heavy and just yeah, didn't do it for thing. me. Yeah, the heavy thing. I didn't like the big um, block, the big chunky thing. Uh, but so, oh, yeah, strats and tellies for me, for, for literally up until I got this. And oh, now, yeah. I, now I struggle to put it down. Yeah, right. Like, the, uh, uh, for me, I, I realised later on that the other thing for me is single coil pickups I prefer even more specifically P90s. Yeah. Humbuckers, I'm still trying to work them out. I still don't really know how to do, how to like humbuckers sort of with the kind of music yeah. I want to make. But, I mean, I put, a couple of years ago, I played like a 58 gold top right. Les Paul with P90s in it. It was it weighed, it weighed the same as a Strat and it blew yeah. my mind. It was, the, it was the one Les Paul I loved. But I think the second electric guitar I had after the Yamaha Pacifica, that I actually sold the Yamaha Pacifica to buy. Right. Terrible as it sounds, but I did. I sold my first electric guitar. You're not going to um, say like some sort of shred machine. No, I, I, thing, I, I, it was an Epiphone Les Paul Special 2. Nothing wrong with that. It was oh, actually, I don't know. This, yeah, that was probably a bit of a down step, wasn't it? Or certainly a side of, step. It was a side step. It wasn't yeah. an up step. It yeah. was just, I, I, um, Tom, who plays bass, uh, who is actually sort of, he's my oldest friend, and he, we learned to play the guitar together, and he, you know, handily learned to play the bass too. Um, but he had one, yeah. and I loved his, and I thought, I'll get one, because it'll be just as great. And it was one of those slightly lower budget guitars that yeah. he actually just had an, a, a sort of diamond in the rough. Right. Mine was all right. But it was, it was a flat top, it wasn't arched like, yeah. the, like a, a proper Les Paul, but I liked, um, I just, I think I just, prefer, I felt a bit cooler with it. I'm not, and were you just using like a little practice amplifier? Because yeah, yeah. I, I Solid love state that. I, I find that so, inspirational for people learning to play guitar today yeah because you know the, the whether it's a pacifica or a les paul special and a little 15 watt amplifier it's like you can still make good music happen totally so I, that there's, there's all that, te that dude terry manning it's fascinating hearing about everything he did with zz top right tiny little there was some pig nose amps involved right apparently or, or something yeah, like i've that, heard that rumor yeah which i love i mean if that is the case you know and i've, I've heard great examples of small solid state amp yeah. amplifiers made to sound enormous I, I love the idea of I'm it, sure so. Joe Walsh's last the Analog Man album was was uh, all done on some 99 pound Fender great you know but I mean if you get the sound the right producer right miking and like Jeff Beck says the rest of it's in the fingers you know yeah. and I, so it was it's quite a good upbringing to be sort Actually, of I'm, I'm not sure if we're allowed to to um, perpetuate that myth what we have to say is obviously you need to buy really expensive guitars oh really sure of course cool, cool, yeah yeah do, <laughs> mm. yeah listen to Lee yeah <laughs> um, I, I like the idea of it though. I like the idea of early days, you know, aspire to the, to the pricey stuff, sure. Um, but, you know, early days, it, it doesn't matter. I think I probably have one or two friends or lo kids locally whose dads were into playing guitar and always have been, so they had some pretty snazzy stuff. Yeah. It didn't make any difference. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what you learn on. You know, if you can make it sound good, you've clearly got something going on. You're, yeah. you're, you're clearly all right. So we didn't let any of that stop us. Um, but yeah, you know, I went to acoustic guitars and focused on songwriting. And I actually, yeah. after sort of nearly 10 years, sort of seven or eight years probably, of just thinking, you know, I'm the guitar player, I'm going to be a guitar player. Yeah. I, I, I sort of just changed my mind because I've been in bands and I'd enjoyed it, but I wanted to sort of test myself even further and do something more as a front, front man. And I stepped away from electrics. How, yeah. how did you find, because you studied uh, guitar yeah, further yeah, education, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. Did you find, um, you know, how, how, what kind of a guitarist were you when you went into that versus when you graduated from that? Um, I was, mentally, I was, I was a different, guitarist going in to coming out yeah F physically it's 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 probably a slower paced thing it, it just varies the mm. rate at which you learn and improve or the rate, rate more i should say is the rate at which you learn and develop yeah um you get to a point where you can you're proficient yeah and then it's just about the areas you focus on and what becomes your thing and what you veer away from yeah. so i kind of went in and came out in some respects i felt you know, the same guitar player, yeah. but mentally was the, the real, because when you get yourself around a lot of different levels and sort of approaches of guitar player, you find, find out more about yourself without necessarily even doing much here. Yeah. You just sort of watch, and there's a bit of comparison going on, and you go away, you sort of go back to your room, and you, and you work on some stuff, and that, that helped me develop, you know, with the whole sort of further education music thing. So but, more, less as a guitar player, more as a musician, you felt yeah, more rounded at the yeah, end. Yeah, 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 because... I don't know, they're okay, they're right those places, but it's a very personal experience actually sort of developing as a musician and 
and you know you will do it at your own pace no matter yeah. what and if that means you spend nine hours a day solid yeah then your pace will be quite quick and you'll still be doing it at your own pace it doesn't really matter what other people sort of tell you they can tell you loads of stuff give you loads of advice and show you where to put your fingers but it's about what you put in that's all you get yeah. out of music you yeah. get out of it what you put into it so what i went and learned was that um i can be here in this place with its name on the door that says we'll do this for you in you know in music and you might become one of these and might become one of those but you know if you just sit there and listen and then walk away like oh great you won't actually achieve yeah. anything you have to be doing it yourself in your own time um as well as there you know you should be spent it should be there should be more time if you love it yeah. then you'll be sat at home learning those jazz chords or those blues licks or whatever or just you know trying to reinvent gcd yeah. you know in a different way um but it's down to you i kind of that's what yeah. i learned um yeah. and I, I so i grew as a musician more than just a guitar player and yeah. i prefer that because yeah. it, so i came out the other side of that tw and suddenly i'm 20 21 22 years old and i'm listening to guitars within songs as yeah. opposed to listening to stevie ray, ray vaughan sing about pride and joy and then just play sort of 10 minutes of the solo yeah and i still love that yeah. But I'm listening to Kings of Leon. I'm listening to Stones more. I'm listening to Kings of Leon. I'm listening to, there's a, like more recently, there's a great band called White Denim who do, he goes hard at the songwriting, lyrics, you know, endless melodies. And then he's this sort of virtu virtuoso player. To check them out. Man, they're what incredible. They? Uh, uh, American they're called, band? They're or? an American band. White Denim, yeah. There's a great record called Corsicana Lemonade. Okay. I mean, you'd love it. You would love it. But, you know, I even went as far as listening to like T-Rex. Okay. And then what the Black Keys did listening to T-Rex. They loved yeah. all that fuzzy boogie rock. Yeah and singing great little sort of nursery rhymey songs to it. It's great, it's great pop music. Yeah. And then I could feel even better about wanting to be like a pop star yeah. type of thing. Well, pop, it's pop's, there's a, Pop there's isn't a, there's a dirty a, word. A That's the only thing you've got to remember. Negative connotation. Exactly. That, isn't it? it just means that it's popular. You know, you it, know. It, exactly. You know, all that, um, just all the, this rhythm has become very popular since the Black Keys and it yeah. was in the 70s too. All that, uh, what's that black key song, uh, tune? Uh. You know, yeah, it's, it's just great. Real you old could take pound. that, yeah, you could take it back to Buddy Holly, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just great old guitar playing, and like, it, it can be as popular as anything else. White Stripes are a great example, too. Yeah. Anyway. I'm keen to know because um, when I listen to some of the tracks on, you know, the Chaos album, yeah. I'm keen to know the Red Century yes, is indeed. used so much yeah. and it's got such a, a unique tone. Right. I, I want to know, did you have those kind of songs formulating in your brain, but then all of a sudden the tone that came out of that guitar went this is how they've got to be? Or, or was it even more um, intrinsic to that? Uh, um, let's plug it in. Yeah, plug it in. Let's plug it in. Because it, it, do it does a thing that, like, it's, nothing I, else really does, doesn't it? I don't know. It's very simple. You know, it's, it's, this, is, this is a really sort of straightforward, hollow body guitar. Only mad differences, if they're even mad, are the wooden bridge, really. I, I, then, did, um, I, I kind of can't imagine how the whole hold back the river thing would sound if you did it on a strat or something it just I know wouldn't... I get you I don't know I, I it, first sort of big reveal it's not really a big, oh, what, you didn't not, record it on that no 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 I did the first, and it's not really a big reveal for a lot of those songs it was unplugged right and that's my favorite thing about this guitar it's quite exciting unplugged yeah. as well it's got this chiminess and a rasp to it Exactly, the rasp, kind of from string buzz, yeah. as much as a, a, a number of other things. And then it's just got this chiminess and sort of deepness. I like all those, Sounds you know, great. conventionally horrible sounds. So plugged in. Yeah, it's got kind of nice little glassiness. It's all born out of, I, I'd just come out of sort of being this acoustic guitar solo guy. So this was an attractive electric guitar to me because I didn't have to step so drastically away from yeah. 
acousticness. You know, yeah. I, it, it kind of has some sort of depth and warmth, and there's a lot of air. You know, it's a hollow so did, body did guitar. Did you essentially play that tune the same just on an acoustic guitar, or did you? No, it, 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 was, it was born on this guitar. That it song. It was born. On that guitar, uh, you know, yeah. I, I was just sitting with this guitar, plug, it, plugged in or unplugged, um, kind of naturally doing, approaching songwriting like an electric guitar player and this sort of acoustic kind of singer-songwriter that I was trying to mould myself into. Yeah. Because I wanted to take it further than that. Yeah. Now, and since writing Hold Back the River or Craving or Get Out Where You Can, you know, Scars, like since writing those songs, I, I never wanted, to, I never, I'm not supposed to be some lovely little intimate sort of acoustic singer-songwriter, you know, pouring his heart out into little songs. Um, but I just had to go through all of those things you know, p take a bit of everything and sort of put it into something else. It's like Craving is one of my sort of favourite examples of me playing what is essentially an acoustic guitar and, and wanting to be Kings of Leon and wanting to be Bruce Springsteen and Ryan Adams and all those guys. And, you know, it's where that big sort of riff... The Roots and Thirds thing is a big yeah. thing for me. That was a real king, uh, that was kind of inspired as well by, I was just in the Foo Fighters. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing like Dave Grohl. I mean, there's nothing like Foo Fighters, but there's nothing like, that's four pretty simple chords. E uh, this is tuned differently, but I, I tune this down to D, the whole thing. Um, D, G, all the rest of them. And, uh, but I still call it E minor, so sorry. Fine. E minor, C. Just, it's got a Kings of Leon-y kind of strumming pattern right, to it, right, right, that, it? Like that down sort of, strokes, yeah. and that's the sort of Foo Fighters thing as yeah. well, you know, that whole Foo Fighters yeah. thing. I, I just, I liked all the down strokes. And Bruce's again, you know, Springsteen's very, the, the, the verses are... Feeding back loads. Oh, no, just do it, it sounds great. All right, great. Well, uh, you know, uh, when I'm when I when it's all. I like all of that. I like all of that. Just big but fat meat. Magic guitar tone that you know, and I think what's. I wonder how much of the the the, the fact that the album has uh, and you as a as a player have kind of been such a breath of fresh air is because it is such it is a new sound cool. you know, I, I, yeah I, you it's know, an old sound but no, a new I get sound yeah I get it I, I just I didn't want to be afraid to keep it simple yeah. on the album you know throughout Chaos and the Calm it's like it's this through a twin and a couple other weird little amps <laughs> um, I like I like you know I like amps that are a bit you know uh, unknown or, or just Unique, definitely yeah. unique. Yeah. Um, uh, despite the twin, that I've just well, obviously, but, yeah, it's um, a bit less you know, unique. But um, still, it was a great one. It was an old, like a '68 yeah. one, I think, and um, cranked it up in a, in a little room, opened the door a bit, and mic'd it in the big room, which was kind of cool. That is cool. Um, and it let all that air <laughs> just sort of move about. Um, yeah, I, I, it's funny. I think in this sort of environment, I'm so used to it now. But initially, I thought that was a slightly ugly sound because it's just this sort of hollow body guitar with yeah. one. P90 in it, and these aren't heavily distorted amps. I let the volume yeah. just be the sort of help, you know, yeah. add to the dis distortion, and then um, the rest of it is. Did you Did you know that uh, Epiphone are reissuing this this year? Yes. So yes, I've seen. I, I, I'm kind of. I'm kind of. You know, we, I, you're I, a little bit involved in that. Are you, well, so? you know, we're, I'm hoping to be. I think I've just knocked a piece of my guitar off, which is kind of great, isn't it? You see that corner there. That was. I, well, I didn't see you hit anything. So no, it's all right. I just picked oh. it off. It's just falling apart oh, a bit, which is great. But uh, like that, I think it's just clipping tuners on the end. <laughs> <laughs> bit of wear and tear up there, getting rid of Because this is what, this is a, what, 60? 66. 66. 66, this one. Um, and, and these would have been made in the States, obviously, in, in, in these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they vary as well. I've been looking, they're hard, so, yes, Epiphone are reissuing them. Because yeah. I was looking for, I did, we did get in touch with their phone, but they're, we, we are in talks. You know, they're lovely people there. And um, uh, they're going to come and have a look at this one, and, and, and we're, I think we're going to sort of talk about stuff going forward. But, That's cool. um, the headstock 
there's a few of these around, like you can find them, but the headstock's always really wide. Oh, really? I don't like that. Like, I prefer that headstock, which you find on a lot of the acoustic, old acoustic epiphones. Um, anyway, um, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's worked out. I saw it on the shelf in a shop in, in, in New York um, called Matt Umanov Guitars on Bleecker Street. Yeah. And I thought it was a straight up electric guitar. I thought it was like the 330. I thought yeah. it was a flat, I thought it was a plain G string and all that yeah. stuff. And I didn't realize that that's a wound G string. That's an entirely wooden one piece carved bridge. Yeah. The saddles are sort of one big saddle. Yeah. Which is kind of awkward in a lot of respects, but. It's, it's got a casino kind of vibe to right. it, hasn't it? But with a, with a. But it's not a even as good in a kind way. of sound. <laughs> it's well, not even as versatile. Is what, is what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm, I'm just sort of fascinated by that kind of... I mean, I know we'll never know what would have happened if you'd written those songs and right. used a Strat or a Telecaster, right. you know. Right. But, you know, in some alternate universe, there's, yeah. there's a James Bay that right. hasn't been quite as successful as you are right. because those songs were written <laughs> just on, on the wrong... Yeah, on, I, on, on whatever it might be. I get you. I know what you mean. I just, I just didn't want every step of the way for myself... Uh, by my kind of own standards, I didn't want it to sort of feel predictable. Like yeah. A telly felt predictable. A Strat I'd played for a long time, and I just I felt like I'd done it. This was weird. This was a challenge, yeah. Yeah. you know, because it has the wound G-string, and it is a bit of an acoustically acoustic-built guitar. You can do all that stuff. It's as kind of woody as it is sort of crystally, you know? The, the video you did to that, which is just you and that guitar. You like that one? That's still my favourite. That I was uh, Fender Blues Jr. Was it really? I, I was really proud of that video. Yeah, which is, I guess there's a little valve in the back of a Fender Blues Jr, isn't it? Oh there? yeah, it's a good little valve. I can tell you're proud. so at home on this guitar. It's have, lovely to I, see. I, so I have a I have a brown one. I have right. A, I ha, it's 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 a '65. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one older. It's nowhere near as nice as this one. Right. It's it's just not. I don't Friday know. It had a Bigsby guitar. in it. Yeah. It had a Bigsby in it. I took the Bigsby out. Just it's just we just changed it to the normal trapeze thing. Yeah. Um, it's got two. It had it came with two pickups in it. Two P90s. So there's a little bit more sort of heavy. You know, some more weight to it. That yeah. I wonder. I imagine you know, you can see this is a lighter wood. Yeah. Lighter in weight and colour. Um, I think the darker wood in the other one makes it slightly heavier as well, and it's just not as nice. I mean, this isn't that heavy. Like, it's it's not. It's kind of all no, right. Yeah, it's you know? it's actually not. It's actually a little heavier than I thought it okay, would be. Okay, because some of them, you know, some of the hollow bodies yeah. of the real light wood are, are you know, it's such a feather cool guitar. But yeah. yeah. So let's just nerd out a bit more on sure. other gear. So you've got uh, a three three zero. Yeah that you um, use a lot? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I use that quite a lot. I, I actually, I used to play that for Craving Live. So right, I, mean, okay. I, think, I think it's because I bought it. Right, and you just felt like you had to get some value out I of it. I wanted to give it some love, yeah. <laughs> but, um, so I got the 330, I do love that. It's got this tiny little neck. How does I, that, oh, that was the, about the skinniest neck I've ever yeah. seen. So let's see how different that sounds if All you play right, a sort sure. of a similar Let me lick. Yeah. Well, if I play the Craving yeah. thing again. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Way more. The, the, la the, the highest, the loudest pickup is a neck pickup. This is a bridge pickup. Yeah. Amazing, like these old theatres and old valve amplifiers, or not, yeah. not old well, valve amps, but old technology yeah. valve amplifiers yeah. and old guitars. They just sound like they, do, they just sing and they roar. They're, they're, they're sort of unashamed. You know, Got a little bit of feedback going on in the background. Love it, love it. Love it.
fun to do it. And fun to play it. are you are you just a big fan? Because I know you're a, like a, a fan of the three amp thing, and and we sort for of these, for these, chatted about that. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. For these size places, it's fun to have. It is just indulgent. Yeah, it is indulgent. I, I'm as I'm as much a fan, in all honesty, I'm as much a fan of one amp as I am three. I don't always use all three. I often just use two. The Hampstead is a, this pair of lungs. It's the sh it's the shouter. Right. It's kind of like the sort of. It's just it's a sheer volume and size. I'm not sure we're hearing that one. Oh, we're not at the moment. Rig. Sorry, we're, we're not in this rig. We're, we're the hearing victory, the talking of the victory in this one because yeah. you know I had to be delicate. Like I say, it's a beast. The Hampstead, and I love that. There are yeah. moments in the set when I just I, I you know I kick it on. And is the, the pedal board? The face. I know the pedal board looks complicated because it's got uh, the, the the G2 doing all the switching stuff on it. But in terms of uh, drive and, and EQ pedals, are you? Is it really none of that going on? Or? No, a lot of the EQ is from the amps. A lot yeah. of the EQ is, is amps. Um, I like it all to be sort of coming from. Yeah. I don't like to mess with it there and then there and yeah. then the guitar. You know, I don't want to sort of mess with it at too many stages. I want to set things. And again, it all comes back down to me from sort of what my hands are doing because sometimes yeah. there's some parts that I'll play. I have a delay pedal. I use a little carbon copy MXR. Sometimes I might, you know, sometimes I might do it myself. Right. I, 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 always, I love reverb. I'll always yes. have a bit of reverb going on. And, we, and we thank goodness for Strymon. Yes, Because they have, they have pushed that reverb boundary, yes, haven't yes, they? Yes, they have. I've got a big sky and a flint on there. Yeah. Um, because reverb on because. reverb, reverb Extra on reverb. reverb. I'm all about that. You know, I have a there's a there's a I've got this new thing called a hot cake, um, which is pretty oh, the, great. I've seen back. that's the pedals from New Zealand, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and the, the, it's because I, I went yeah, to New Zealand yeah. and I turned up. It was the first time I ever went to New Zealand. I was playing a show there. Crowther, Crowther yeah. hot cake. Yeah. And um, there was a there was a there was a, a little gift in my hotel room when I got there, and it was a hot cake. I was like, this is incredible. And um, and there's an archer. I forget what the archer is. Who the archer? Made the J Rocket. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's pretty killer for like that lead, is a great lead guitar stuff. Do you know what that that uh, that hot cake? I used to stock those about ten years ago. They were one of the first kind awesome. of like non-boss right. alternatives. They're cool. Man. And uh, I don't know, I just completely forgotten all about them. But it was well, a great sounding pedal. They are. Listen, check them out. They're a fun little sound. So this is just the, the standard sound. Yeah. It's a sort of little sort it's of... Gone, we've gone back like 10 years in... Yeah. I'm using it for solos. I love the Archer. The Archer's cool. I like love we do, the like Archer. We do, we do a little Proud Mary cover. Let's step on this, this button, the Archer comes in. I play a lot of these sounds actually on the red, but seeing as I'm in here. Um the thing I love is like, you know, the modul those modulation sort of sounds that you hear. The inspiration for me is like, I always think for some reason of the old, the original Christopher Reeve Superman movies. <laughs> I know it's weird, but. You know, there's those sounds. Between that and the war on drugs stuff, if you've heard this. Stuff. 
In terms of what the things are, I don't. I, I, I'm not like I bought a pog. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done anything with it. No, you didn't fancy I, doing fact, some royal blood sort of stuff. Not yet. I didn't buy it. Jack, Jack get bought it for Jack's me. Jack's such he a pedal fiend. He, he, he he's got it. all of them. The bike course is his. Is Jack, it? Jack is the keys. My keys and guitar player. He's, he's incredible. He's, 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 a, a, he's a pedal hero. And Anderton's famous as well. You'll find that out. Um, uh, the di I have a, the carbon copy delay. This is kind of great. Pretty simple. I have that pedal too. Got the mod button on. I love oh, okay. that modulation. Yeah. Um, what do I use that for? It just changes the colour for a minute. Yeah. It just changes the colour. And that's, 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 all I, that's all I really wanted to do. Just love a bit of tremolo. Again, you know. From the flint. Anything for a bit of oscillation. Tremolo is actually um, the Sky King. Oh, okay. Jerry's going. T -t 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 -t. So I wanted it to be really off from that tempo, yeah. just to confuse people. <laughs> sounds immense and amp wise I think because I've always that's probably where I got to know you the best isn't it just in well, terms of all the different you, amps you introduced me to the Sky King yeah um, down at down at Anderton's and then so you've got that on the real sort of the, the, the tweed kind of setting yes and I guess that's your, your more brighter chimier kind of toppy uh, stuff toppy yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. I still love those amplifiers but you know that particularly oh. the Victory they are lovely particularly the Victory has some real body to it as well um, which I I, I, I need that, like I said, a Hampstead is this, like, it's like these guys sort of make up like Captain America and they're coming at me <laughs> and it's great and it's hard and it's pretty indestructible and then I step on that and the Hulk comes in. Right. That's the, that's the Hulk and that's Captain America. That's um, awesome. Yeah, something like that. And then I, so I essentially get the, Avengers. I get, the have the I, Avengers. I get yeah. the Avengers assemble when I step on a certain <laughs> button. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go with that. That's the best analogy. I think that's I'm the really best proud analogy of that I've analogy. ever heard. Yeah. That's incredible. So, look, what is the future now for... Because, I mean, Chaos on the Calm it has, must have exceeded all oh, your expectations. Yeah, it has. It has exceeded all my expectations. I, you know, and all those numbers, all those facts and figures are really exciting, and that's all great. But I basically I have this platform. After having done, you know, in London alone, we did three Brixtons last year, we yeah. did four Hammersmith this year. I have this huge platform now. To, to go away, make a load more music, tailor it even more to my guitar player desires, yeah. as much as my songwriter and my singer desires. And it's very simple, man. The future is just about, you know, bigger shows, longer shows. More guitars. More guitar solos. <laughs> more guitar solos. In those longer shows. <laughs> and, um, and, and bigger, bigger, you know, bigger sort of everything, just more... more more of the same, but better. Hmm, I'm going to say that. Well, that I mean, I'm going to say that um, because it, it's not. I don't know if it will change drastically from one album to the to, from the first to the second album. You know, one day I will just make a synth album. I'm sure. But um, for now, I will stick to guitars and, because they are my. Yeah. No, these are my. This is the love. You know, this is the good stuff. And um, uh, and you know, so the future is more music as soon as possible. Um, you know, hopefully on even longer tours for in bigger venues for more people. You love the touring, don't you? I do. You because are I, hard because working. It's, it's, it's when we tour and play in the big venues that I get to have all three amps on yes. stage. You know, I may I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll just go out to one amp. But um, no, 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 four. 
All right, four so, amps. All right, now we're talking. It's the future. I've got a big platform up there. <laughs> There's a lot of room for amps up there. Maybe we're talking 15 amps. You know? <laughs> but, That's so, the old Joe Bonamassa set, isn't it? When you see him on he Facebook, does, he's got he? like every single Fender amp he's, ever. He's the, he's the best kind of geek. He's the, he's he the is true, super he's, geek. He's the truest. He is. So yeah, man, more, more music and, um, and hopefully a whole different set of stuff to talk to you about next time. Oh, man. Well, look, can I just say? Of course. You yeah, know, man. whatever, you, you know, I'm, I haven't met many pop stars, rock stars, whatever, in my time. But they don't come much nicer and more down to earth than this it. chap. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure any of you could catch up with James and talk about guitars in a yeah, pub man. for half an hour. But, yes, thanks so much for inviting us. Of course, us. man, of course. I'm looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. Yeah, man, nice one. Um, fun. That's it. Can I just say that when we, when we sort of clapped hands together in this room, you didn't hear it. Should you do it again? But it was gorgeous. Right, yeah. That's good, oh, that. It, it's That's natural. The, the, the aircraft, it, was, it was beautiful. We'll put some effects on that as well. Yeah, Maybe some of that bike chorus. Get a bike chorus on, on, exactly. on the hand slap. Nice one. All right. Cheers, guys. See you soon. Thank you.